I said, well, I happen to be the director of the Solid Rocket Motor Project for Martin Plackhoff. He said, would you come down here on the floor and repeat what I think I heard? Because if I heard what I think I heard, this will be in litigation for years to come. My life changed when he said that. Because then I knew who was going to be in the middle of all this litigation for years to come, me. At that moment, I decided that I was going to start writing down everything I knew, as much detail as I could remember it, everything I heard, and everything that was published in the press. I did that the next three straight years, because I, about three months after the accident, they issued this report to the president. I was called in because uh, right after my first testimony for the commission, I was called in and said, uh, you're no longer head of program, you're head of scheduling. I said, scheduling? What the hell are we going to schedule? We're not going to build anything. What we build certainly isn't going to be what we have. And they said, that's all right. All these people work for you, it doesn't work for you anymore, and you're, you're, you're in scheduling. And they gave me this non-job. And I said, furthermore, you're off of the failure team. You can't have any interaction with NASA. You can't do any of the failure analysis. And uh, it was ironic that about three or four months later, I ran into General Don Katina in Washington, because I, at the time, was the head of the uh, chairman of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics Solid Rocket Technical Committee. And I was turning my gavel over to the newly elected chairman. And, and they were having an uh, annual conference there, and they were having this big keynote address by the Assistant Secretary of the Air Force, Pete Ulrich on what a horrible state of affairs we were in because we lost both Titan and Shuttle, which was our major launch vehicles for large payloads, all of our big spy satellites. And uh, he couldn't show up, so he sent General Katina to, to give this briefing. And he, I was sitting in the front seat, and he saw me sitting in the front seats. So when he came down, he says, Al, what the hell are you doing here? He says, uh, you shouldn't be wasting your time hearing this crap that we're telling everybody about these launch vehicles. He said, you need to spend all your time figuring out why the shuttle failed the way it did. Because I'm not doing that anymore. I haven't been doing that for some time. Said, what do you mean you haven't been doing that? I thought you were on the failure team. I said, I was. But I got removed from that. He said, when did you get removed from that? I said, right after I testified for you guys. He said, you're kidding. I said, no. He said, well, that's bullshit. We'll fix that problem. He called the chairman, and they brought in our corporate executives and read them the riot act. And then about a month later, I get called in and said, hey, now you're going to be the head of this whole redesign team for fixing this problem on the show. And I kind of, uh, you know, I enjoyed that. Well, that was great, because that's what I wanted to do. I can get rid of you know, looking on what could have been things. Well, uh, about two months later, I get a phone call from uh, Congressman Markey from Massachusetts. He's still there. He said, Mr. McDonald, is it really true what I read in the New York Times that you're heading this uh, whole activity to restore the shuttle? Or is that just a facade your company's putting out there and they got you in some menial job? I said, no, it's, it's real. I've been working 16 hours a day, seven days a week. I said, do you know something I don't know? He said, well, he said, I'm sure you're familiar with House Joint Resolution 634 we introduced in your name was passed by the Congress and the Senate. I says, no, what's that? He said, what's well, the bill? He says, we uh, wrote to protect your job. In fact, he says, uh, I'll send you a copy of that along with a letter we sent to your CEO in Chicago. And what it basically said was, <laughs> if they didn't reinstate me to a job equivalent to what I had before I testified for the commission, that they were not only canceling the existing contract,